in life, just like in poker, you kind of have to play the hand that you dealt. Sometimes you're going against people who have all the chips in their favor. Sometimes you're having those who are just steady. They have a good hand in life and are maintaining. And then there's times where you're this guy. Just down on your luck, a couple chips at your disposal, but you have to play the hand that you're dealt. Just like this hand is almost like an interpretation of my life. My daddy, who was a king, he one day met my mom, stole his heart. And they came together and nine months later, boom, I was born. But the only thing is, my mom and my dad, they didn't stay together. Matter of fact, they walked out of my life completely and left me there all alone with just a few chips in my favor to play this game we call life. That was until one day my new daddy showed up and he talked my new mom into adopting me. Sure, we're not the same complexion at all, but they have all the resources they need to take care of me. Matter of fact, they even had siblings for me, my two sisters. Now, we may not have all the chips in our favor, but we certainly have a loaded hand. Now, with this family, we think we're perfectly suited for each other. But the reality is, is there were a lot of things that I was going to have to face on my own. So granted, my family, they loved and adored me and they would do anything for me. My mother, my father, my two sisters, they would take care of me all day. But the reality is that there were other members of the family. My grandparents on my mother's side and my grandparents on my father's side. Now, my grandparents on my mother's side, they loved and adored me. But much like my original parents, my father's parents didn't want anything to do with me. They wanted no parts of that game. But that was all right by me because my grandparents and my family, we had a bunch of cousins, uncles, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews. It was great. It was like a big old party and they all love me anyway. So all these people, even though we're not the same suit, we were perfectly suited for each other. Although I finally realized that my family loved me, the reality was is I would still have to go and venture off and find things in life out on my own. And part of that was migrating into schools uh, in segregated school districts. And there I would be surrounded by a bunch of six and seven year olds who really wanted nothing to do with me. So there I found myself isolated in a classroom, segregated, sitting behind a bookshelf on my own while all the other six and seven year olds played with one another and threw racial statements towards me. And those were things I had to process as an individual. So as I sat there in class, isolated by myself, the whole time my teacher allowing that stuff to go on, I simply withdrew myself. I didn't find my place in that setting. My early introduction to childhood education was segregation, isolation, and loneliness. So there I was, a young man trying to figure out what was going on, where's my place in the world, where do I really fit in? And the only people I could really count on were my mother, my father, and my sisters. So sure, again, how could they tell me where I would fit in in this world? They don't know what it's like to be a black male in an all-white society. Well, at least my father could give me some fatherly advice. Or at least until he decided to lead the game as well. So now there I am, a young black male, no male role model in the household, and only women to try to tell me how to approach the situation as a man. As I would struggle trying to find my identity in this world, I was fortunate to come across my ace boom coon, my main man, Drew. Through him, I found a way to express myself through laughter, through the joy of life, with my best friend. His complexion, it doesn't matter because what he taught me was whoever I was as an individual, that I would be all right, I could count on him. And that through laughter, 
I can express myself through joy, through pain. I found an outlet, a way to express my voice. So I guess to summarize this metaphor on life, no matter what cards you're dealt from the deck, whether it be parents who bring you into this world but don't have the resources to take care of you, grandparents who truly don't see any value in diversity in life, if you're surrounded in class by a bunch of kids who refuse to accept you and their teachers who allow that to go on, none of that matters because you still have to play the cards that you dealt. So if I'm in that situation, it was important for me to surround myself with family members who cared about me, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, and most importantly, my parents, my sisters, and my good friend. And again, although we're not the same complexion, we're all perfectly suited for one another. And with that, all the chips on the table can be yours. As I look at the internal dimensions of diversity, uh, in my life, the things that have been most prevalent, um, clearly race relations. I was, uh, as an African-American child, uh, was uh, given up for adoption by my parents um, to subsequently be adopted into a Caucasian family who, in the early 70s, would come to find out that raising an African-American child in an all-white society was not going to be easy. Um, as a result, we, uh, as a family unit, face a lot of uh, racial scrutiny from both inside our family unit um, and then the external factors, uh, school systems, uh, neighborhood community organizations, churches, all things that had uh, an overwhelming impact on who I am as an individual. Uh, but what I learned through that is that if we're going to take on uh, racial inequalities, we're going to need advocates. We're going to need people who are supportive. We're going to need people who stare down uh, inequalities and call those things out in real life. Um, because collectively, I truly believe that um, when we embrace diversity, we win. And it doesn't matter the game we're playing.